glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to see everybody that's here this morning. <laughs> oh man, it's good to laugh. It is. Um, let's uh, let's lift our heads and let's invite God in this place this morning. Jesus, I just want to thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this this opportunity to be in your house this morning. God, I pray that this service be about nothing more than you, dear Lord. Jesus, don't let it be about anything else, God, because if it is, it's about the wrong things, dear Lord. God, I pray that you would just begin to anoint our worship this morning. God, I pray that you would just anoint the word that's going to go forth this morning, dear God. And we'll just be careful to give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all worship with us this morning. I want to sing a new song. Shout it out louder than before. Let the roller see. Let the roller see. a place we can seek his face changed in his presence and touched by his grace there is a sound I hear it all around worship is rising and people crying out I want to sing a new song Shout it out louder than before. Let the water sing. The water sing. It's a song of raising. It's a song of all of the reaping. Let the water sing. The water sing. Never the same. He's taken my chains. There's freedom in Jesus. Power to save. There is a name. I know other name. There's freedom in Jesus. So shout out his name. I want to sing a new song. Shout it out loud and let people let the whole earth sing. The whole earth sing. It's a song of God's grace. It's a song for all of the reaping. Let the whole earth sing. The whole earth sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to sing a new song. Shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. The whole I see It's a song of grace A song of for all of the reaping Let the whole I see The whole I see I want to sing a new song Shout it out loud and thank you people the whole I see The whole I see it's a song of grace, a song for all of the reaping. Let the whole earth see, let the whole earth see. Amen. Can you give him some praise this morning? I said this before, but the thing I love about the, the thought process of that, that song, sing a new song, is because it, most of the times, songs come from experiences that you've had. They come from feelings that you've had inside. And they can come from 
from things that you've gone through and everything. And I'm so glad that God has brought us through so much up until this point that he's given us a new song. And that's why we should sing that new song with joy. Because you know what? That is our worship. That is us saying, God, you've given me a new song. You've given me a new day. You've given me another chance to come and worship you. And I thank God for that. Y'all worship with us as we sing every day that I live. Every day that I live, I live by the glory. I live by the glory. Every day that I live, I live by the glory. I give up the glory every day that I live. I give up the glory. I give up the glory every day that I live. I give up the glory, I give up the glory to you. Through the sunshine, through the rain, through the clear sun, through all. For the rest of my life, I need even me. in sacrifice every day that I live. I give all the glory. I give all the glory every day. ushers would like to come on down. We'll take up our Sunday morning tithe and offering. We do have uh, a few announcements that we want to 
mention. Um, of course, we've got our trunk or treat that is one week and a day away. It's going to be on November the 4th. Um, that's uh, not tomorrow, but next Monday night. And, um, wait a second, I'm, yeah, okay. Man, I can't believe it's November already. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. But um, November the 4th, trunk or treat, um, 7 to 8 o'clock. Um, the sign up sheet is still back in the foyer for uh, decorating cars, and uh, I think there's one more spot for chili. Somebody filled that this morning, and uh, we've got a lot of cars on there so far. Um, but we welcome as, as many as you know want to come and decorate their car. Um, the more the merrier. So um, I'm looking forward to that night, though. So and uh, be spreading the word. Um, I'm going to put up a thing on the um, Facebook page today, reminding people about it. So if you want to share that, maybe go and. You know, tag some people that you know that have got small children. Um, that's great because that, that gets that word out there. So we're looking forward to that. Also, um, we're going to be having a church meeting on November the 10th following that morning service. Um, this will be for any questions, thoughts, or suggestions on you know what's going on with the church and the status of the church. Um, but please be in prayer for that meeting. Um, be fasting. And uh, so that way God can lead us you know, to do what's best for the, the church here. And uh, let it be His will, not ours. So, um, if you got an unspoken prayer request this morning, if you'll raise an uplifted hand, and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, again, we we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to come together. God, I pray that you would just just move in this place right now, dear God. Jesus, I pray that that you would just take the circumstances that are in this place this morning and begin to turn them, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray that you just begin to speak to the storms in our life, dear God. Jesus, so that they are removed. Dear Lord, that there will be peace. God, I pray that you would just give us that trust in you, dear Lord, to, to put it in your hands, dear God. No matter what's going on, every unspoken prayer request that was raised by uplifted hand this morning, dear God, you see each and every need. God, I pray that you would just, just touch in our meeting that's coming up, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray that you would just Give us wisdom and guidance, dear Lord, Jesus, so we can further your kingdom here. And God, I pray that you just touch in our, our offering and our tithes this morning, dear Lord. I pray that you just break it, bless it, and multiply it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. gonna live by what I see. Nothing 
I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible for you. Blind eyes are open. Strong roads are broken. I am living my faith. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Amen. Put your hands forth together this morning. Amen. I'm glad we serve a God that there's nothing impossible. I mean, we can't even begin to imagine the things that he can do if we'll just believe and let him act on our behalf. Amen. This last song we're going to sing, I, I love this song. This is one of my favorite songs um, of all time. And um, let's just get lost in it this morning. Just get lost in His presence. Get lost in your worship this morning. Let Him begin to take over this place. I am free because you said I am free. I am free no matter how I feel, no matter what I see. Your word is my authority in every season of life. So as for me and my house, we're going to be free. So I will stand up. Fight for my freedom. I will stand up and take what belongs to me. And I will worship in my situation. I will lift my hands, lift my voice, declare I am free. As for me in my house, as for me in my house, we're gonna be free. As for me in my house, as for me in my house, as for me in my house, we're gonna be free. Because you said I am free I am free no matter how I feel No matter what I see Your word is my authority In every season of life So as for me and my house We're gonna be free Stand up and fight for my freedom. I will stand up and take what belongs to me. And I will worship in my situation. I will lift my hands and lift my voice. Declare I am free. As for me in my house, 
has for me in my house. Has for me in my house. We're gonna be free. That's for me in my house. That's for me in my house. That's for me in my house. We're gonna be free. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. We're gonna be free. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. I'm gonna be free. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. Gonna be free. Our uh, student ministries would like to be dismissed. They can at this point in time. While they're being dismissed, I'm just going to sing a little chorus, and if, if y'all want to sing it with me, that's great. your hands and sing it to him. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to take a little time right now. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I just want to take a little time right now. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I 
just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's give him one more hand clap offer to praise this morning. I never want to fail to thank him because he's never failed to bless me. And I'm definitely one of those type of people that you give honor where honor's due. If I if I see a person that's serving in our military, I make sure to go tell them I appreciate your service. I don't know them. I don't know their situation, but I appreciate their sacrifice. And God sacrificed everything for me, so I never want to miss one minute to give Him the praise and glory that He deserves for what He did for not just me, but for everybody. If you'd like to be seated this morning, you can. I've got a little bit of a lengthy reading to start the message this morning. I'm excited about the message this morning. I told uh, I told Brother Bradley that uh, before we got up here that I'm I'm excited about this message this morning, and we should be excited when we get in the Word because the Word's good. It should give us joy. It should uplift us. And if sometimes the Word, if you get in the Word and you feel like that it's kind of slapping you in the face, there's a reason for that too. I've been there before. You might say, well, this isn't right. You know, the Word shouldn't be, you know, popping me in the face like that. Well, maybe it's because I need to change something. You know, maybe it's because I need to check myself. So, this morning, I want to encourage us this morning. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 14, starting with verse 14. And it says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. I'm sure a lot of us have heard this story before. I know that I was praying this same message one time. I'll never forget that we had a, uh, we had a potluck dinner here at the church. And, I mean, this was years ago, years ago, and I believe... My mom and Sister Patty and Sister Donna, I'm sure, a bunch of them were, they were kind of worried. They started looking, they said, well, you know, we don't, it doesn't look like we've got enough. But we did. And it's because we prayed. We prayed before we said that, or before we sat down and ate that food, we prayed that it would, it would be enough. Now, I want us to notice something. I'm going to go back to verse 14. That 
it says that Jesus, he saw a great multitude. He saw a great multitude. There was a lot of people there. Huge crowd of people. I can't begin to imagine trying to feed 5,000. I can't begin to try and imagine planning to feed 5,000. I'd lose my mind. I'd be worried to death. If you told me I had to feed 5,000 people, it's, it's going to take some supernatural help. It's going to, for sure. And if you don't get anything else out of this message this morning, I want you to get this. Your need may be great, but your God is greater. There was a great need that day, but the person that was there was the person that needed to be there. The Son of God was there. He's greater. He's greater than anything that can come against us. And I'm so glad this, mo this morning that, that He sees this multitude of people here and He knows exactly what we need. He knows what we need. But here's my thing, is that when He looks down and He sees us, what does He see? Because when He saw those 5,000 people, He saw a group of people that were hungry. And that's why the miracle took place. It's because they were hungry and they're, they're looking at Him saying, feed us. We need something from You. Are we hungry this morning? Did you come hungry this morning? And I'm not talking about in the natural because if you came hungry in the natural, we had Sister Vicky down there to try and help you out with that. Or you had something at home. But I want to tell you this morning that this morning, I want, you to, I want us to be hungry for something that you can't get anywhere else out there. You can't go to a store and buy it. You can't save up enough money to go out and obtain it. You can't. Because He's the only one that can give that out. He saw a people that are hungry. God is looking for a people that are hungry. Are we hungry this morning? Your belly... Your belly may be growling a little bit. What's your spirit doing? Is your, is your spirit starving? Is it dying? Because I tell you this, there are people out there that, that they have eating disorders, all right? And they starve themselves on purpose. There are people out there that don't want to eat. I'm not one of those. Never have been. I don't see, I don't understand those people. You know, why would you starve yourself? Why would you not want to eat? It's right there. But then you've got, you've got people that are starving and they want to eat and they're hungry. And I've made mention to it in the past couple of weeks is that we've got people in third world countries that they don't have a lot of food, they don't have a lot of material things, but they've got God and they're hungry for Him and they gather around and they seek Him out. And He's doing things in those third world countries that are greater than some of you know the greatest things you can imagine. Pouring His Spirit out on thousands of people at a time. So, again, I ask you, what are, what are you hungry for this morning? I want to jump down to verse 17. The disciples, in verse 17, it says, we only, we only have five loaves and two fish. We only have five loaves and two fish. But then Jesus said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. If that's what you got, bring it to me. You know, I'm glad that we serve a God that's not worried about what we don't have or what we can't do. He's just worried about what we do have, what we can do, and giving it to Him. Bringing it to Him. Don't hold it back. Don't think just because you've got a little bit to offer that you shouldn't give it to Him. Go ahead and give it to Him. Give Him a chance. He's got, he, he's got a plan for your life. 
He just wants us to bring everything that we've got to Him. And when we are able to give Him everything, that's when He'll do what He did here. It says that He blessed it, He broke it, and then He multiplied it into something greater. If you give God what you've got, even though you may not feel like it's a lot, if you can give it to Him, guess what? He'll bless it, He'll break it, and He'll multiply it into something greater than you could have ever imagined. That's the kind of God that I serve. That's the kind of God that we serve this morning. But you know what? It requires some giving up on our part. It requires us to get out of our own head and say, you know what? This may not be a lot, but here it is, God. Take it. Do what you will with it. And I guarantee you, He won't let you down. Because He's got that plan for your life. In order for this to happen, though, it all starts with trust. You've got to trust in Him. And you've got to be obedient to His Word. It says that in verse 20, that after Jesus had blessed and broke the food, that they all ate and that they were all filled. Now, I want to move to a little different part of the Bible because you got to understand that these, these men that were writing these stories in the Bible, there were several different accounts. And I'll say this, that for you know, a lot of people writing the same thing, they all line up pretty dead on. Now, I could take and I could go tell a story to four different people in here, and then y'all go out and tell a story, you know, the same story, and there's no telling what could happen with it. There's not. But I love the fact that the Bible doesn't contradict itself. But there are a little bit different wordings. And one of the things that I notice is this same story is found in John 6, and the, the disciples told Jesus, they went up and told him, they said, these people are hungry. You know, it's late in the evening, they're hungry. And Jesus asked them, where should we buy bread? Where should we buy bread? And this was a test, of course. You know, Jesus does have his little test. He said, where should we buy bread? And in John 6 and 7, Philip answered him and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have, excuse me, yes, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. So, essentially what Philip is saying here is, you know, we've got this money, we can go buy this bread, and everybody have a little. Everybody have just a little bit. Which a lot of people would say, you know, yeah, that's great. Everybody gets a little something. That's fantastic. That's not the God that we serve. We don't serve a just enough God. We serve a more than enough God. That's the God that we serve. It says, it says when they ate, they were filled. You know, it doesn't say that when they ate, they walked away and, and they were wanting more. It doesn't say that. It says that they ate and they were filled. He didn't want to give just a little. He wanted them to be sustained. He wanted to give them exactly what they needed. He wanted them to be filled. And He wants you to be filled this morning. If you've come hungry for something this morning, if you've come hungry for His Spirit to be poured out on, on you, if you've come hungry for God to change a circumstance or healing in your body, He wants to fill you this morning, and He's got what you need. He doesn't want His people feeling insufficient or, or you know wanting. But it starts with us. 
It starts with us being hungry and being and wanting to be filled. Now there's another story that can be found in Luke that I want to talk about for a little bit. Luke chapter 5 verse 4 it says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, first off, when I read that, it says launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. It didn't say launch out into the deep and let down your nets and you may catch something. It doesn't say that, you know, do this and, you know, it might not work, but, you know, it's worth a shot. God's not going to lead you in the wrong path. If He tells you something, just do it. Because He knows the end result. He knows that the blessing's on the other end. So He says, let, let down your nets for a catch. But here we go. Here's our human nature right here. Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Toiled all night and caught nothing. Essentially, he said, you know what, I've already tried that. I've already tried that on my own and it didn't work. Well, guess what? When you tried something on your own, it may not work. But when God tells you to do it, you can put it, you can take it to the bank that it's going to work. Because it came from Him. It didn't come from me. If I tell you to do something, it may have completely, something totally different happen. But when God says something, it's ordained by God. It's a part of His plan. But then I think Simon Peter kind of, it kind of hit him in his head. He's like, you know, I, I, I forget who I talked to. So there's that word, nevertheless. Nevertheless. At your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. I can't begin to imagine all these fish. A greater catch than they've ever had before. Something greater than they've ever had before. Let that sink in. God spoke. It says that he, he blessed, okay, he blessed the food, he broke the food, and then they were filled. Well, let's look at it this way in this story. He blessed the word, the nets began to break, and then the nets were filled. There's a blessing, a breaking, and a filling. You know, sometimes we don't understand that, you know, God's blessing is on our life. We just have to give it back to Him, and then once we give what is blessed back to Him, then He can break it. Some of us need breaking. A lot of people think that breaking is a bad thing. I know that I've, I've felt that way before, because if I ever broke something in the house, which happened a lot of times when I was growing up, or went through sheet wall or something like that, or sheetrock, if I messed something up, it was not a good thing. And then there was another breaking that took place after that to something that's already got a crack down it. But so I didn't understand why it had to be spanked so hard. It was already cracked. Breaking wasn't good. You don't think of it like that sometimes that breaking's good. But when you can put your life in God's hands and He can break you and then put you back together the way that He wants you to, the way that He wants you to be, then you know what? That's when He can come in and He can fill you and He can multiply and do greater in your life than He ever has before. I want God to do greater in my life than He has before. I want God to do greater in your families, in your lives, in this church than He has before but it all comes with a hunger that builds up inside of us. That's where it starts from. You know, when we're little babies, when we were little babies, we cried and cried and cried and cried until somebody gave us food. And I know this is, I know we had to have because I experienced this with my two little girls, crying like crazy. And then Casey tells me, they're hungry, Levi, feed them. And I'm like, 
okay. And then sure enough, you stick the bottle in the mouth and then they're good. So from the time you're born, you know what hunger is all about. You know what it's all about and you cry and cry until you are, are filled. But at some point in time, we lose that crying because there are people that are just satisfied with what they've got and they're not hungry anymore. And they're not crying out to God and saying, God, I need you to come fill me. I need you to come change this circumstance or this situation. It's time to cry out to God. It's time to get back to hitting our knees, lifting our hands, and crying out to Him and saying, God, I need you now greater than ever before, and I'm not going to stop crying until I'm filled. And God's a good God. He's not going to let you go hungry. He's not going to let you starve. He'll fill you. He'll fill you with exactly what you need. And if we'll just begin to trust Him and stop questioning Him and crying out to Him, He will pour out a blessing on us that can't be contained, just like those, those fish and those nets. It says the nets started to break. But then they realized that one boat wasn't going to be enough. They had to call a whole, whole other boat. When I begin to think about that, I begin to think about, you know, there's been times that, that I've been in services here at this church and, you know, other places. But I want you to know, the reason that I say that I've been in services here at this church is because I want you to know that God can do it right here. There's a lot of different stuff going on out there that you see other churches that His Spirit's being poured out and they're being blessed. And you say, well, you know what? Why can't we have that at Mount Pleasant? I'm telling you this morning, we can and we will when we begin to hunger after Him. But we've been down here before and somebody be getting a blessing from God. God poured His Spirit out on somebody and then somebody else came down to lay hands on them and all of a sudden, bam, it pops them. And then they're, they're filled with the Spirit. Let's all get filled. I want to see every one of us filled. I want to see because when we're filled like that, when God comes and He fills you, that's when that joy returns. That's what we need. We need joy. We need joy to come back in these walls. We need it to be flooding every inch of this place. Because this shouldn't be like coming to some funeral service or anything like that. This should be a celebration. It is a celebration. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. It says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. Think about those words right there. Exceedingly abundantly above all. He's able. He is exceedingly and abundantly able to provide all of your needs. It says that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now, now notice that right there. It says that, you know, that, that Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. You've got that power inside of you. I said this Wednesday night that, you know, I, I feel like that God's Spirit is inside you from the time that you're born. It's there. It's not something that, you know, that, that you know, you've got to pray and pray and pray and pray. No, I, I feel like it's there from the time you're born. But see, you've got to activate it. You've got to activate it. Everybody likes these little things right here, right? Somebody can give you a phone and, you know, it'd be great, you know, and you, you've got all these little things on that. But notice that until they activate your phone, you can't send out a message or call anybody. You can't. Somebody needs an activation this morning. You need to activate what God has put inside of you, what He created you with. He's got purpose for your life. You've got to want it. Now, when I was doing my study, I, I knew, I said, you know what? I said, I want to use that verse in Ephesians 
where it says, you know, exceedingly abundantly above all. And I was planning on just using that verse. But I want us to look at verse 21 as well. Because when I read that, I was like, man, that's good too. So I'm going to read it all together. It says, according to the power that works in us, to Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now the reason that struck me is because, you know, it's according to the powers that work in us, but it's to Him that is to be the glory. And notice that it says it's to Him to be the glory in the church. In the church. Now, yes, this is a church. This is a church. But we are the church. We are the church. What is the, the little Gatorade saying? Is, is it in you? Yeah, it's in you. It is. It's up to you whether or not you're going to activate it. It's, whether, it's up to you whether or not you're going to hunger and desire for God to come move in you and through you greater than ever before, to move in your family greater than ever before. You know, the church, it should be a filling station. This should be a station, a place where people can come get filled. It should. Now, I'm not saying God can't, can't fill you know, somewhere else. I, I'm not saying that He can't fill you at your home or anything like that. But if there's going to be a fill a sta filling station, it better be here. You better be able to come get filled here. You know, you might go up to somebody's house. Anybody ever ran out of gas before and been on the side of the road and maybe walked up to somebody's house and said, hey, do you have some gas laying around? And they said, oh, yeah, we've got gas. But if you ran out of gas and you were right there at the, filling sta at the gas station, how embarrassing would it be for them to say, we don't have any gas? As my Aunt Kathy would say, hello? Hello? It's a filling station. How embarrassing would it be for somebody to come in this place and not be able to be filled? That would be extremely embarrassing for me. I would hope it would be for you as well. That's why I want this to be a filling station. And I want there to be more than enough to go around. I don't want there to be just enough. God doesn't want there to be just enough. He wants there to be more than enough in this place to go around. God wants to pour out and fill you throughout. He wants to fill you enough in here that it sustains you. Because when we go back and look, and I'm, I'm sorry, Brother Buzz, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Matthew 14, verse 20 from my original text, it says, so they all ate and were filled, and then they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. So not only was there enough for everybody to be filled, but notice I said that God wasn't just enough God, He's a more than enough God. And there were 12 baskets left, even after everybody was filled. And you know what? That struck me. That, you know, a lot of us come and we're, we're wanting something from God. Hopefully you are. Hopefully you're coming this morning. You're wanting something from Him. You're hungering for something from Him this morning. You want to feel His Spirit this morning. But guess what? Just what you get today, if it's just enough, guess what? It's not going to carry you throughout the week. So what God wants to do is He wants to fill you and He wants there to be some left over to where, you know what, when Monday morning comes around and it feels like everything's hitting you all at once and you're thinking, oh Lord, here we go again Monday morning. You know what, you can just lift your hand and say, in Jesus' name, I'm going to make it through this because I've got enough filling inside of me to carry me throughout the rest of this day and the rest of this week. But guess what, that's why it shouldn't be a one day a week thing. This shouldn't be the one day that you decide, all right, I'm going to come in and, and I'm going to give God everything, you know, and, and you know, He's going he's gonna to do what I need today. How many of y'all are going to go eat lunch after this? 
I, I would hope everybody. So essentially, everybody's going to go eat lunch after this, and then you're not going to eat again until next Sunday after church, right? No. No. Some of us are going to eat lunch and then have snack and then have supper. Some of us are going to have to hit up the Dairy Queen after they leave lunch. Or Wendy's and get a Frosty or something. That's the way I was raised. That's, the, that's, that's why I'm in the condition that I'm in. I'm not blaming anybody, but... <laughs> but it's not... It's not logical. You're not going to leave this place and eat and then expect it to carry you throughout the rest of this week. So you're going to get hungry again. So if you've got enough, if you've got enough to carry you throughout the rest of that week, then you're good. So you've got to seek Him daily. You've got to come to Him daily. Because you know what? He's got the leftovers. It says they took up the 12 baskets that remained and they brought him the 12 baskets. So he's got the leftovers. So after he's filled you this morning, you know what? When you get hungry again, hey God, I'm, I'm ready for some of those leftovers. I need, I need them right now. Monday morning, I need the leftovers. Send them on down. That's what we need. We need an overwhelming filling of God's Spirit. And I'm so glad that we serve a God that's not a just enough God. That He's a more than enough God. You know, if it were left up to me, it, I'm sure it would be like a just enough thing, you know. It would be a last minute thing. I procrastinate a lot of times. Some, you know, and I remember people you know, tripping out because, you know, when I was in college, you know, I'd tell them, you know, yeah, I wrote my term paper last night. And they look at me like I'm crazy. That's the way I work sometimes. God doesn't work like that. Thank God. He doesn't work like that. He's got your best interest in mind at all times. And He's ready. He's ready. He's just waiting on you to give it to Him, to give everything you've got to Him so He can begin to break it and multiply it. You've already been blessed. You're blessed this morning. Don't think you're not. You are blessed. We are a blessed people. But you know what? There's times that we need to be broken. And some of us this morning may feel like that they are broken. You may feel like you're broken. But you know what? Have you given your broken pieces to God and said, God, put them back together? You may feel like you're broken this morning. Have you given it back to God? Have you said, God, here's what I've got? You know, if there, and the great thing is there might be some pieces missing. That's fine. God can fill that piece with something greater than was there before. He can. You just got to give it to Him. And then, once you can take your broken self, give it to God, and Him put you back together again, you become that vessel again, and He'll fill you. He'll fill you. And it won't be a you know, half glass full, half empty type of thing. He wants to truly fill you to the brim. He wants it to be overflowing. If you'll stand with me this morning, We don't have 5,000 people here this morning. We don't. But you know what that tells me? That tells me that God is more than capable of coming into this place and doing exactly what He needs to do. Doing what He wants to do. But we've got to step out. We've got to step out in faith. We've got to step out in trust. And know that, that he, 
He can and he will. He can and he will. See, that's the thing is in John, when he asked him, where should we buy food? He already knew in his mind that he could. He already knew what he could do with the, the bread and the, and the fish. But then that's when they said, he said, bring them to me. And that's when he said, I will. So there has to be a handing over. So whatever you've got this morning that you're holding on to, come give it to Him. Come give it to Him, and He will. He will put you back together. He will fill you. He will bring joy back into your life. And the reason, if, if, if not for any other reason, I know this, you can read in Acts 2.17, it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. I didn't ask Daddy to sing this, to play this song again, but how fitting. This song talks about, I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. And that's exactly what this verse is talking about. It says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. He will pour out His Spirit among all flesh. It's ready to be poured out this morning. He's got it right there. Just, just take it and just, just offer it to Him and say, God, fill me. That's all you got to do. If you've got dreams in this place this morning that you want to see come true, come let Him fill you with your spirit and He'll give you the plan to see those dreams carried out in your life. If you've got visions... If you've got visions for yourself, visions for your family, visions for this church, come give it to Him. He wants to fill us this morning. He doesn't want you to leave this place empty-handed. He doesn't want you to leave this place insufficient or starving. He wants to fill you. So just come give it to Him this morning. We're going to open up the altars. I'd love to see God pour out His Spirit greater than He ever has in this place. It can all start this morning. There has to be a starting point. This can be a starting point. Let's come worship Him this morning. I am free because you said I am. I am free no matter how I feel, no matter what I see. Your word is my authority in every season of life. Gonna be free. So I will stand up. Fight for my freedom. I will stand up and take what belongs to me. I will worship in my situation. I will lift my hands, lift my voice, declare I am free. As for me in my house, as for me in my house, as for me in my house, we're gonna be free. As for me in my house, as for me in my house, as for me in my house. We're gonna be free. 
sing and declare this morning. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. We're going to be free. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, we're going to be free. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we're gonna be. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughter. I declare freedom for my son. I declare what the word has spoken. And what I feel, the word I see. I declare every chain is broken. We're gonna be free. As for me in my house. As for me in my house. As for me and my house, we're going to be free. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we're going to be free. I declare freedom for my friends. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what the word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare everything is broken. We're going to be free. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughter. I declare freedom for my son. I declare what the word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare 